Okay, let's get into coefficient of viscosity now. Now coefficient of viscosity is force acting on any layer is equal to F. All right, F force acting on any layer is F, which is directly proportional to area and dv by dx. See, this is what is our velocity gradient, gradient. And what is area? Area. Let me make you understand the area part. We we saw this laminar layer. I have mentioned here area. So this is the area. This is the area. This is the area. This is the area top surface of the laminar layer which is in contact with the upper surface. Now this is again area top surface of this layer which is in contact with so if I call this if I name it this is the second layer area which is in touch with base basal area of third laminar layers. So these are the areas which we are talking about. More the area in contact, more would be the force of viscosity. All right. More would be the restriction of flow. Okay. So getting back to it. So F is directly proportional to area and velocity gradient. So when proportionality sign goes, we get a proportionality constant, which is eta. All right. So this is this is called as coefficient of viscosity. So force becomes the so the formula becomes F is equal to eta a dv by dx. All right. So coefficient of viscosity eta. Now if I want to take it in terms of coefficient of viscosity, obviously this thing would be put in down here. So it is F over a into dv by dx. That becomes our formula for coefficient of viscosity. And we know force is Newton, so I jotted down here Newton and uh, area is meter square and dv by dx is dv is meter per second and x again is distance that is meter. So Newton second per meter square becomes the unit. So this is the unit. It is equal to m uh, rather I would say Newton second per meter square which is Pascal second. Pascal is Newton per meter square. So that is what is Pascal second. So one Newton second meter square is 10 poise in SI unit and one dyne second per meter square is one poise. Eta LMT is L minus one, M one and T minus one. All right. Let's understand Stokes law now. Stokes law, viscous force acting on small sphere falling through a viscous medium is directly proportional to the force viscous force is directly proportional to eta which is coefficient of viscosity r radius of sphere and also directly proportional to velocity all right velocity with which the sphere is moving down the fluid. All right, that's what is Stokes law. Now, F is directly proportional to eta R V, and when proportionality constant goes, we get a constant. We get a constant which is six pi, which has been experimentally found out. All right, that's what is Stokes law. Let's try and understand terminal velocity in fluid mechanics. Now, this is a small glass in which I have put in a sphere. All right. Now this sphere has density rho and it has radius r. Now what happens is as we drop the sphere in this glass of water, initially there is a bit of acceleration and then it moves with uniform velocity. This uniform velocity with which it moves is known as terminal velocity. Now our job is to find out formula for the terminal velocity. All right. Now when the sphere is moving with uniform velocity, that itself means there is no acceleration. And when there is no acceleration, that itself means there is an equilibrium between upward force and downward force. Now what are upwards and downward forces? Downward force, obviously, we know is mg, which is driving it down. 
and the upward forces viscous force which we studied which was 6 pi eta r v and upthrust force or buoyant force which is again 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma g mind you sigma is density of the fluid in this case water all right and here also we saw instead of mg we wrote 4 by 3 pi r cube rho g we have seen in lots of videos how mass can be converted into rho into volume so rho density this density is of sphere and volume can be converted to 4 by 3 pi r cube that's the formula for sphere all right so so the viscous force and upthrust force is in equilibrium with downward force that is mg okay so that's what i have scribbled down over here when sphere attains terminal velocity uniform velocity that is acceleration is equal to zero then total downward force is equal to total upward force so that's what is equilibrium state so what can we do we can definitely set up the equation as per this so downward force mg and this is viscous force and this is upthrust force this is upthrust force so what do we do we bring we take this that side so it becomes 4 by 3 pi r cube rho g which already was there and when we took it there it became minus 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma g all right not to forget sigma was the density of medium and rho was density of sphere all right so we get this so it becomes this obviously we can see it's common so we take it out and it becomes rho minus sigma so this becomes the formula for terminal velocity that is 2 by 9 obviously 4 and it can be so it v therefore v is equal to 2 by 9 r square g rho minus sigma over eta all right so this is what is the formula for terminal velocity